one of the things that is so important about healing from religious trauma is really understanding what you're dealing with. And part of this is realizing that the childhood indoctrination that you've been through is really intense and really comprehensive. And probably a lot more than you thought. So let's just talk about that and all the different aspects of it. And to, to do that, some time ago, I drew this diagram because I was trying to keep track of all the different pieces of it. And there were so many, and it just became uh, complicated. And as I was talking about the developmental aspects of it, the, the parental influences, et cetera, et cetera. So I ended up drawing this thing, and I think it can help us understand it. And first of all, um, the, the, the one thing that is important to understand is that it's a closed environment. There's this effort on the part of the religious community to keep you protected from the big bad world, right? So there are a lot, and there are a lot of ramifications for that. But there's this closed religious environment, and that's what this blue line is here. Um, and that includes both the family and the church authority. And by church, I'm going to include synagogue, <laughs> um, kingdom hall. <laughs> In this group, we have a little of each of these religious communities. But they basically do the same thing. They try to create a, a, a rarefied environment that's, that's um, that's separate from the world. And so um, uh, within that, there are certain things that, that happen and certain things that are kept out of that environment. So um, what I have here is this blockage from other people and worldviews. And this is information that's withheld about science, sex, politics, history, culture, psychology, these are examples, and for different groups it may be more or less of these things or other things. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have this effort to keep out all of these areas of knowledge and influence, and then within it there are um, toxic doctrines that are taught. So. There are toxic doctrines taught, and then there are also practices that are used that are toxic. So the toxic doctrines are basically, and I'm talking about evangelical Christianity here as an example, because I can't do all of them, but the, the, the evangelical Christian example includes fear, which is basically damnation, end times, and evil influences in the world. And then shame and guilt, that's, you know, you're personally bad and wrong. And then fantasy idealism has to do with, with thinking that everything's got to be perfect. It's perfectionism. And you're going to have this perfect relationship with God. You're going to be going to a perfect place when you die. Um, you have to be perfect. You're going to relate to... Um, uh, perfect Jesus and, and everything has, you know, God has perfect will for your life or uh, a perfect plan for you. And this is all, in my opinion, a huge disservice because that's not how life is. So you have, you have fear, you have shame and guilt, and you have this fantasy, of you, you're living a fantasy. And to me, this combination is just totally toxic. And all of this is taught to you as a small child when you really have nothing to, nothing to compare it to, and you can't really defend yourself. <coughs> and then at the same time, um, you're taught that you're not supposed to think for yourself. You're not supposed to think otherwise. You're not supposed to trust your own cognitive processes. There are verses in the Bible to that effect. Right? So repressed critical thinking is going on at the same time where um, you're basically disabled in the most important way as you're being fed a, a set of uh, beliefs. 
And then the harmful child care practices have to do with punishment as a, as a primary means of, of, uh, ma of behavior management. Isolation, which is isolating you from other influences. And impossible expectations, you're never good enough. So there's no way to live up, there's no way to live up to what you're supposed to be as a perfect child. And if you ever fail in any way, shape, or form, whose fault is it? It's your fault, right? You're never going to be good enough to meet up to these standards. And uh, so you get told that you're wrong and bad from birth, but that's okay, you can confess your sin, Jesus loves you. Um, but it's this cycle of abuse, in essence, because you have to keep coming back, you have to keep on over and over being sorry for what you've done and get forgiven. And then you, because you can't live a perfect life, you're gonna fall down again, you're gonna sin again. So you have to be sorry again and get forgiven again, and it goes on and on and on. And you're always the one at fault. So there's no way for a child, or a person for that matter, to ever feel really good about themselves. So if you have this feeling of not feeling good about yourself, no matter what you do, that's why. But basically, you're not supposed to. And then we have developmental delays, because, because all of this is going on, and, and uh, the, the normal processes of development can't really happen. You can't have your, your intellectual development happen normally because you're not supposed to think for yourself. You're not encouraged to, to develop cognitive skills. You're also not supposed to develop emotional skills with accepting your feelings and understanding them, what you do with feelings and how you um, manage them because most of the feelings that we have are, are wrong. Um, and also socially, uh, relating to other people in mature ways, that's, that's also uh, something that doesn't develop normally. And sexually, of course, doesn't develop normally because sex in most of these religious traditions is considered probably uh, the most dangerous area of human behavior, right? Sexual sin is more serious than, than other sins, and so in most families, it doesn't even get talked about. So a lot of people don't really uh, end up learning about it or dealing with it until they leave the faith, and by then there's been a lot of damage, and some of the damage is really sad in the sense of, uh, being taught that to look at a woman is, is, to, is, is hurting her, um, or lust is, is just as bad as, as adultery, and so forth. So these developmental delays are all going on at the same time. So what reactions do you have to this chart? How do you, how do you feel about somebody that has gone through this, or do you relate to 